Hi, it's Ray from Pro Shaper in Charlton, and this is the Jaguar 1962 Jaguar E Type steel nose that we're copying in aluminum 063 H14 half hot aluminum. And we're doing this copying of the surfaces with my flexible shape patent system. Uh, we've had four parts to this video so far, they're up on YouTube. And the last part, part four, was transforming this flat blank into what we see here. And what do we have right there? Well, we take the flexible shape pattern over there and we've got little home marks here in the corner. Get it all marked on here. And the object is to hold this tight like this and the flexible shape pattern will be nice and tight all along the edge and all along, all in the center. So I'm holding this on its marks and it's showing really nice and tight. And not only does it have to do that, it has to reflect well. All the reflections on the surface, you turn it every which way and you look for little low spots. The low spots can be four or five thousandths deep and you'll see them. And if you see them, you just a little low pressure and you can bring those up. Now, what needs to happen still is we need to do the final trim on this. And we use the, the flexible shape pattern to do that also. And this has got a little reverse here and that is uh, indicated by this loose edge. So if we didn't trim this off, it would be hard, we'd have to stretch way out here. So we're going to trim this to almost within to, to the, where it's supposed to be cut and then we'll stretch that out in the wheel. Maybe the planish in him, we'll see. Now I've also added the flange material. This is where the flanges are. So that's going to give me my true trims. So the next step is trimming this to where it's supposed to be. Now it won't be the final trim because even when you when you trim it at this point here, you want to leave a little cheat room. So I'll mark it and I'll actually do the trim about an eighth of an inch wider than it needs or bigger than it needs to be. So that gives me a little cheat room. When I bend these over, they're going to eat up a little material. Usually you generally lose about a sixteenth of an inch when you bend those flanges over. This flange, once you set the arrangement to this front, comes around like that and then a little weld is done right here. So this is the most difficult part pretty much in the whole nose. The corresponding underneath piece will have two sections similar also and they'll be difficult. The rest of it, uh, the difficulty level is nowhere near as difficult as this. What makes it difficult is this radius in the front. Now we're going to try setting that radius just by using what I call fulcrum blocks, manually pushing it over, checking it with gauges. But what we have done off camera, we started in one of the other videos, was we have punched out all the holes where all the gauges go and all the pertinent information. What that allows you to do is take a pen, once you get this oriented exactly where it needs to be, and you make little dash lines and then you transfer, so you make the dash line here for gauge number three and then you make sure you label that gauge number three. So then gauge number three has to fit properly. That's setting the arrangement. So first step we're going to do is get this homed and then using a super fine pen we're going to do a perimeter mark really accurately around the flexible shape pattern and that'll give us the information of where we need to trim. Okay, here's our panel now. We've taken the flexible shape pattern and we put it on there and it's been fitting really perfectly now. And with it on like this, we tape it down with masking tape and pull it tight at all the corners. And then using a super fine Sharpie pen, we mark completely around the whole perimeter. We've also marked through all the holes. We punched all the holes where the gauges are going to go and we do these little dashes and we've marked everything so now we know 
where gauge number three is on this panel. It's perfectly indexed by the flexible shape pattern. There's the little index point where the gauge has to index. We have an index point for every gauge. And these are the flanges and we got the tip points of them right here. They got to be tipped. And around the perimeter was originally the superfine Sharpie and I translate that into blue vinyl tape which is the uh, detailed tape or, ma or uh, pinstriping tape. It's made of vinyl rather than masking material. It makes corners really nice and I use that exclusively on all my cutting. Now as I mentioned before, um, I will always cheat now a little bit. I'll leave a little extra material which can easily be ground off later. If you cut it right on the line then if you needed a little extra material you don't have it. It's very easy just to grind that off later. Now also this is where this little corner comes together and we got to set the arrangement first. That'll come in like this and to do that it has to be free of this. Then this arrangement gets sent, uh, set by, by bending it on that line right there and then it gets welded right there on the corner. So if you take a, a shear and cut up the middle, that will allow this both of them to be free and then later on we can, we can fine tune it. But it's not good practice to go up like this and uh, with a shear and, and uh, it potentially can keep cracking right there when you're doing the uh, uh, bending and the arrangement. So all these little sharp corners, we're going to take a little drill and we're going to drill those out first before we cut anything. So we're going to do the drilling first now and then we're going to do the trimming. So just show you the one little drill operation and then it'll be all trimmed when we come back and then I'm going to start setting the arrangement. these inside corners are potential crack zones. I think that covers it. Got one more over here. Okay. So that's that. Now the next step will be cutting. So when I come back, it'll be all cut. All right, so now here's the panel with all the trimming done. Like I said, I left a little margin here in a few spots. And the next step will be starting to set the arrangement. This is the most important part right here, the arrangement for this front nose radius. So I'm gonna try to set that first and we'll, we'll use a, what I call a fulcrum block to get that into arrangement initially. If we get that really good, uh, and that will be verified by the gauge readings we get. We got gauge four, three, and two are relevant to that, and also this gauge here, nine, and gauge eight. And then after we get that done, then we will tip these flanges, or we might do this joggle over here. And that's all the details. So generally making a panel, the fir what I call the first step is the gross development of the shape, we've done that. We've got to first capture the information, which we did with the flexible shape pattern. And then using shrinking and stretching techniques that I showed in, I think, video three, um, we did the gross development of the shape. And that happens generally pretty quick. And then we had to refine the surface. The refining the surface means bringing the surface up to full development onto, so it fits the flexible shape pattern really well. Then we use the flexible shape pattern to define our perimeter and all our uh, arrangement information all comes from the location indexing from the flexible shape pattern. Now we've done that. And so step one, gross development of the shape. Step two, uh, surface development, refining the shape. Step three, 
now we're adding details. Adding details incorporates also trimming and marking the perimeter and getting all your information on. And that step number three is pretty much what the subject of this video is all about, is getting those details in, making the panel look exactly like it needs to be when it's finished. Step number four in my class I call um, uh, the final the final troubleshooting uh, you will always find one little spot here or there that after this is all welded together we might find a low spot over here or a high spot if it's a high spot we bring it down if it's a low spot we bring it up so any mistakes at this point are very very minor and it can always be dealt with so now the next step is doing this arrangement and we're going to do it on this nose piece verified by the gauges. We're going to take the tape off because we can't have the tape here which we use for marking be in our way. We, if we have to, we're going to have to stretch this edge a little bit because this needs to be stretched out according to the flexible shape pattern. So that'll be actually step number one and we can't do that with the tape on so all the tape has to come off. So now I have the tape all off. I have all the marks for the profile gauges. I got all the bend lines in and I didn't want the tape on there because it, it'll be in the way of uh, this operation I need to do here right now. And this is, when we put this back on, you'll see everywhere is fitting very nicely, it's nice and tight, except for right here. See all this extra material? That tells me that's the reverse curve. So what happens here is this radius wraps around the radius on the front nose piece here. It wraps around and when it comes around like this it has to shrink. But then when it hits the, the turn under point about halfway through here, then it has to stretch. So it turns from a shrink to a stretch. And that's indicated by the flexible shape pattern with all this loose material. So we've got to figure out from looking at the flexible shape pattern exactly where we need to put that stretch in. Well that stretch starts about right in here. Most of it is in this area here and it comes down to, the, to, down to here. So it's something like like this with the predominance of it right in here. Now I've stretched a little bit of that out but I have to keep stretching it until this material will lay right on there nicely. So there's a couple ways I can do that. First we'll try it in the wheel. This is probably going to be in the way a little bit so that's the bend line for this right here. So I think I can just bend that a little bit with my fingers get it out of the way. Now I cut it uh, but the tab is holding it here a little. Yeah, now I can get it out of the way. Okay, so now it's on the same plane there anyways. So, I'm going to try wheeling right there. See if I can uh, get that to stretch up a little bit. This is called the linear stretch. That's not working, so we're going to try something different. So, I want to go over to the stump. And here's what I got to do. Right in here, I have to stretch. So, we're going to try to elastic stretch that. that on the wheel, that was a, a compression stretch. And it was going to take too long to do it that way. Now the other way you can do it in a planishing hammer with a linear stretch die or a power hammer with a linear stretch die. But this is a simple, effective way. And this is a Porter Ferguson hammer that I bought years ago and had a broken head on it. And I've, I've made it into a uh, hammer that has a, a round on it like this and, and a bit of a relief this way. And I put leather on it. 
and you work on this stump with the notch in it. Now I'm hitting it the wrong way, but it doesn't matter. All that matters is the metal gets stretched. And this, is, this will stretch the metal really quickly. Now it's a big mess, but that'll all planish out. Now, when I'm hitting it this way, it's also setting the arrangement in the wrong way. But again, that'll pop over real easy. It just needs that extra material there to do what you want it to do. So now we monitor what we've done by checking the flexible shape pattern. So you put it back on its home. We get the perfect lines there. And we hold the flexible shape pattern down tight. This is looking all good over here. Here still needs a little. Here still needs a little, but it's greatly improved with just a few of those hammer blows. Well, the job's almost completed. Plus when we hit it with the compression stretch, either on the planishing hammer or the English wheel, to planish it all out, we'll gain a little bit there too. There's a little bit more. And we check it. Now you can see that is sitting down nicely on the metal with no more waving effect. When there's too much metal present, you get the wave. There's the wave there. So now we have to planish that, smooth it out, and see what we got then. All right, so now we're going to wheel this out. We're wheeling right on the edge, coming in just a little bit, smoothing out all that stretched metal there. can do this with a shrinker stretcher with a stretcher die, but um, if it's the file interface type dies, that are, um, you're more likely to probably rip the metal. So you need a stipple, stipple uh, interface to make sure you get the right result. Pull the metal over a little bit more here. And then we're going to check it with the flexible shape pattern again. All right, when I planished it, it averaged it out. It could still use a little bit more, so now I'm going to hit it. Well, let me try wheeling it just a little bit more with a little heavier pressure and see if that does it. It's right on the edge. If you don't add this area, this piece of metal, which needs to roll over, will refuse to roll over. There's not enough area there. It can't make the turn. So we try it again. That's this whole story about doing precision work is you constantly have to feed back off your plan. This is your plan, the flexible shape pattern or a buck is a plan. You have to do a little work, check it, do a little work, check it, do a little work, check it. 
All right, so it looks like it's still needing a bunch. So I'm gonna have to go back to the stump and hit it one more time. Now the metal is getting thinner here, but it started out as 060. It looks like it's probably down to about 40 thousandths right now. It's thinned out right here. That's plenty of strength still left in the metal. I discovered this by uh, looking at uh, a picture of an Italian shop one time and I saw a stump with a notch in it and the light bulb went off on my head. And it's a, it's a great simple crazy idea but it works perfect. So now we got it stretched again. We might have to do it another time too. We'll try planishing that out and see what results we get. Try that. There's still a little bit there, but it's greatly reduced. And it's caused the metal to grow this way. So I can cut some of this off. And that will make it work a little faster. All right, I could continue doing it on the stump and the English wheel, but I was going to give this a try to see, show you the planish and hammer with a little linear stretch die on it. Planishing hammer is a great tool for localizing what you want to do. You can dwell on a spot. Any power hammer or planishing hammer does that. So I got the, the die in there. And we still got a little there. So I cut it so there's less material to move. Work it, check it, work it, check it. All right, now you can see that's laying down pretty nicely. Maybe stand one more hit. I want to hit it once more. No more ruffles, it's laying right down. So that means that should arrange right around perfectly. So, but before we do that, I think I'll get this joggle in here. I'm gonna get that little, that's the headlight um, mounting joggle right there. I'm gonna see if I can get that all in first. Now I'm gonna be putting the blue tape back on where I'm gonna tip this here. I probably didn't need to take it off. So I'm going to put this back on here and verify that I didn't make any bad errors. So I'll home back on and the blue tape is right where it needs to be. So this needs to come down. What we're doing is making this joggle from here to here. That's the seat for the headlight uh, trim piece that holds the headlight in. 
the headlight bucket or the headlight uh, glass lens and then there's a chrome trim that goes around it. That's an offset or what we call a joggle and it's about almost a quarter of an inch, probably about two hundred thousandths or so. This can be approached in a bu bunch of different ways. The English uh, often use what's called swedging machines which are little screw presses. They'll make a little die and they'll put that in. A lot of Americans and people all over the world now use pull maxes. They'll make a die and they'll put this in the pull max and uh, it'll make that nice little jog all in one go. But you got to make the dies up. So on a real budget you can take and use a pair of vice grips and you can bend it down and as you bend it down this will this is an inside corner so this is going to have to be stretched a little bit so what I'm going to do is I'm going to tip it on the tipping wheel same as doing it with the vice grips but the tipping wheel is rolling it in versus going in at one notch at a time and I got a video on the tipping wheel. You can watch some of the details of the tipping wheel on my vi tipping wheel video. So it needs to go down 90 degrees. My mark is on this side. How do I get the mark on the underside? Because we want to approach it from this side. So one of the ways to do it is to take a pair of dividers. You can take a pair of dividers and measure like this and then pop the measurement in here and that's one way to do it but oftentimes what I'll do is I'll just roll it the wrong way tip it up which transfers the mark on the inside but in this case I think I will use the dividers I don't want to mark up this aluminum too much so I'll take the dividers got it set there and I'm just going to make a bunch of tick marks here and then I'll just put blue tape on it. So it's, it's pretty close to being a little parallel line here, but it varies a little bit, so I'm just double checking. So now I have my line transferred. This is the uh, master line. I'm not going to remove that because when I'm done, that's going to be right on the edge. That outer blue line will be right on the edge. So. Now I'm going to take and put this on. I just love blue tape for cutting, marking of any type. I use a lot of it. It's so accurate. You can make beautiful lines with it. You can lift the line up and change it. And uh, it's so good to be able to see it when you're cutting or doing any operation. That line, it's much better than a, 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 a magic marker line. So now we're going to go over and we're going to tip this in the tipping wheel 90 degrees. So a couple passes through there, and we're not at 90 degrees yet, but we're getting there. This has to be stretched in order to get over to 90. So I'm going to put that with my stretcher dies over here. Uh, now actually we can go back to the planishing hammer, and we'll hit that with the planishing hammer, and it'll be probably work quicker. You can see right here the line is off a little bit. That's why I leave this master line on. It's good, but right here I'm a little short. So I probably will just go in. I'll reroute this line here. Move it over just a little bit. 
and I'll do that one more time there. So that moved it over. That'll still a little bit more, but it's pretty close. So now we're going to go to the planish and hammer and stretch that out, and we'll get this at 90 degrees. So we're close to 90 now, and now we got to mark it for the second bend, and then we'll have to shrink this all back up. It got wider because of the stretching, so we'll have to trim it too. If you don't have dividers, get some dividers. It's one of the best tools that are off for doing this sheet metal work. So I'm measuring to the center of the top of that radius to the valley, and I'm going to tick off a few spots here. That should be good. And I just set my finger like this. My finger becomes the divider. So there's our line. And now we're going to tip that. But we're first going to mark it with the magic marker. So we want to put the blue tape on this side and run the blue tape along our magic marker line. And now back over to the tipper. Remember the tipping wheel is the fulcrum the panel is actually the lever so I'm lifting up as I roll through. No I don't like electric motors on it I've done it in the past it's just too uncontrollable I like the nice slow approach make sure everything looks good if you need to back up it's instantaneous. Now I keep moving back and lifting at the same time Now because that metal is so stretched out there, now that's a problem, so I've got to shrink that back. So I'm going to go over to the shrinker and shrink that. Now when you ever use a shrinker stretcher setup, you only have to go in the half the distance of the flange. If you go more than that, you're really not helping yourself out because it's all the action is always on the edge, whether it's stretching or shrinking. So if you go half of the way in, you're, you're doing exactly what you need to be done. So this is working pretty good. How could you do this if you didn't have this die? These dies are expensive. They're probably like $1,500 for that one die set. Nice if you have them, but if you don't, well, you can make a little hammer form and put it on a bench and hammer that over a hammer form. Um, you could take a tucking tool in here, a little small one, and get, get some gathers and then kind of crunch it down and that'll give you the shrink.
So now we'll uh, hit it with a hammer and get that plane flattened. You can see now I've got that nice little flip up over here, just like it is over there. I've got to get this all seated properly and depending on how much I shrink or stretch that, that'll change this curve here. Right now it looks it's a little um, too tight right now. So we're going to hit that down. So this is my post ollie setup. Um, this is just uh, truck brake drums. You can get them almost uh, for free or a couple bucks. They throw those out by the millions every year because they're out of uh, spec and uh, they make awesome bases. So this is just a piece of uh, angle iron that's been boxed or tubing or whatever. And two by two quarter inch walls uh, tubing, a little offset, and I put a little wing on this one for a lower position, which we're gonna use in a minute. And these are post ollies, just mild steel, weld a one inch stem on them. I make these ends that are you can lock the ends for both the height and the turning. They're in uh, the Pro Shaper website for sale. So they clamp right on. And with aluminum, that edge will bite. So I'm going to put a little Gorilla Tape on there. We use this to just knock this over 90. This aluminum is real malleable, and I can check to make sure how big that offset is. I should be using a straight edge over here for it, but let me do the curve first, and then we'll move it, move it around. If the offset is not deep enough, then you can change the depth narrow or deeper by the angle that you use on this post dolly. So now we'll do an assessment and see where we're at. So there's our flexible shape patent on, and it's looking pretty good. See how the patent fits down right in that reverse curve? Remember before it was way up like this, but now see, it fits right on there beautifully. Um, how did we do on the joggle? Um, it could stand a little work. Uh, right here, I might be a little wide. So I'm going to re-ink that, and we'll work that one more time, and we'll bring this up a little bit. Maybe I'll get a dolly, just a hand dolly, and work it with a hand dolly. Here's a nice dolly that'll work nice. It's got a nice radius, and I think that'll do what we want. I'm put a little duct tape on here, Gorilla Tape, and we'll set it in here. And we'll walk that over a little bit more, a little bit more right in here. A 
Again, what happens, it all depends on where you put your fulcrum. This is the fulcrum, and the hammer is essentially the lever. Now I got a, this is a situation where a beater bag would work really good. So I'm gonna go get a beater bag, put a beater bag right there. All right, we got the beater bag on there for weight now. And now we can slap this down a little bit more. Now, we'll bring this over and see what we've got there. We're a little wide, so we're going to cut some of that off. The angle went off here. That has to be worked a little bit. So we'll put a post dolly in here and work this angle. This angle is good down in here. So we'll trim it and then change the angle. Now, I'll trim this. These are a special pair of cutters I made years ago. Basically, a a set of, uh, believe it or not, these were hot from Harbor Freight and they were U.S. made. And the neat thing about these is they have a really nice offset to them. All the cutters made today don't have this offset. I wish I could buy more of these, but apparently the company went out of business. So these normally would have been about an inch and a half or an inch and a quarter longer. But I just cut them off. I cut them so they're going about a three-eighths cutting edge. I wish I had done it at about five-eighths. What that allows you to do is it allows you to nibble. So I can get in here and I can cut that right around. So I trim that little excess off now. So now I'll sand that with 80 paper. But now I want to get a post dolly die and then change this angle of this. I got to drive this one down. So that's the next step. 